So I'm um, back with part four. Let's continue here. Let's have a look at the word entice. All right. And then we have to, we'll go to Google. All right. Strong's H6601. Patha. Patha. All right, Patha. All right, you see this? Entice, deceive. You see that? Persuade. That's what this man is doing, right? Through his television sets, through his media, right? Okay, at the podiums, all right? Using... Uh, Athletes, movie stars, okay? You see that? Right? This nation is divided, right? See? To be enticed, to be deceived, people. You see that? To be gullible. You see that? That's what it means. To persuade, seduce. You see that? Okay? And that's how the devil works. You see that? All right? To allure. You see that? You got that, people? See, flatter. Yeah. His, his, his mouth, his words were smoother than butter. Where do we read that? Give me a minute. Hey, what does it say here, Psalm 55 and 21? The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. You see that? That's who you're dealing with. Okay? That's who you're dealing with, people. All right? Um, let's get back. Let's see here. All right. Give me a minute. All right, this is the definition of entice. Attract or tempt by offering pleasure. You see that? And what is it that this man says? You take his, uh, that serpent potion, all right, that serpent juice, that piss, all right, and, well, you can uh, now go uh, to a Broadway show. You can now go attend, you know, a football game, a basketball game. You see that? You see how that works, people? All right? What does it mean? Tap, allure, to lure, all right? And that's, what it, and that's what he's done. He's luring you into his net, okay? To be what? To be destroyed. He's luring you right into his net. Give me a minute. This is Psalms 10. I'll start around, uh, I'll start at, uh, let's see here. I'll start at verse 6, all right? He saith in his heart, he shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. That's Esau's thoughts. He'll never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud, and under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages, right? Your cities, right? Your hoods. In the secret places does he murder the innocent, Jakes, all right? Innocent Jakes, okay? All right? Eyes, his eyes are privately set against the poor. See? There you go. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor, right? You Jakes. And he does catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. See that? All right, let's get back. All right, so again, the temple, lure, lure, 
persuade, see that, invite, convince, induce, you see that, coax, woo, seduce, lead on, sweet talk, smooth talk you. I already took you to uh, Psalms 55 and 21, right? His words were uh, as soft as butter, right? Tempting, alluring. You see that? You see that? Captivating, enchanting. See that? Charming, intriguing, tantalizing. See? There you go, people. That's what it means talking about entice. All right? See? But you're what? Being enticed means to be deceived. And you're being deceived by the devil. He's the false accuser, the deceiver, the slanderer. All right? Uh, all right? Um, so, it says, my son, all right? If sinners, and he is the man of sin, enticed thee, consent thou not. You're not to give your consent. You want the uh, the devil to flee? You resist him. All right? Uh, now, what happens if uh, you don't do that? And you've been warned, right? The Lord here has warned you. All right? There's a penalty. Let's go to that. Let's look into that. All right? Let's look into the penalty. All right? Uh, give me a minute. This is 2nd Ezra 16 and 69. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision. I repeat. And they that consent, right, unto them, unto these Edomites, shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden on the foot. You see that? And he's had his foot on our necks for the past 529 years. See that? And... You already know what enticement means. It means to be deceived. You're being deceived. All right? All right. Uh, what else? What's the ultimate punishment? All right? If you don't are here to take heed of what the Lord is saying this morning, Revelations, the 14th chapter. All right? Revelations 14 and 10, right to the point. And the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, that's that thermonuclear fire from the ICBMs, plus there'll be that concentrated laser fire from the chariots with the angels in them, see? In the presence of the holy angels, you see? And in the presence of the Lamb, Yahweh Shai. There you go. So, you know, when you choose that, when you've let Esau entice you and you went ahead and uh, taken his uh, his poison, his potion, hey, you know, it's only a matter of time, but you've chosen death and destruction over life because Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai represents life, all right? And Esau represents death and destruction. It's that simple, people. It's not complicated. All right. Anyway, let's move on. All right. Let's continue here. All right. Let's go to Matthews. What is that? 3 and 11. What does it say here? All right. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. That's talking about John the Baptist, who, by the way, was Elijah. Okay? And Elijah came back, regenerated, reincarnated as John the Baptist, which again is in the scriptures. All right? Give me a minute. All right, this is Matthew 17. All right? I'll start in verse 11 for you. And uh, Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, talking to disciples, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias has come already. All right? And it's talking about Elijah. All right? The same name. All right? Elijah, Elias. 
talking about the same person. And they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed likewise, shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. All right? Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. See that? You understand, people? All right? All right, let's get back. All right? Okay. So I indeed, so I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. That's John the Baptist, right? Who in his previous, uh, uh, you know, carnation, he was Elijah, but he came back as John the Baptist, all right? Uh, and again, that Elijah will come back, you know, even again, even after that. Right, he will send them uh, before the end times. Right, and of course, for those of you who can receive it, you know, because regeneration, reincarnation is biblical. You know, that would be uh, Abba Bivens. All right, who headed it up one west. All right, but he that cometh after me, this is John the Baptist saying this, is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Okay. And he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, the Rakakadash, the Holy Spirit, and with fire. See that? With fire, that fire of adversity, that fire of tribulation. You understand? Which is what? To cleanse you. Okay? And like I told you earlier, you know, the scriptures itself cleanses you. All right? Um, let me give you some examples of that. Uh, what is that? Ephesians 5.26. All right. Let's see here. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. See, the word cleanses you. Okay? Just as fire purifies and cleanses you. You understand that? All right. This word does that. Okay, and what's the other one? Uh, Psalms. Let me see here. Give me a minute. And this is Psalms 119 and 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to the word, the scriptures, the report. You understand that? Who have believed the report? Isaiah 53 and 1. All right? All right. Uh, you know what? Uh, we're going to end this here. We'll be right back. All right. We're part five. All right. Shalom.